I've had a request to put together a video on how to set up and adjust the hand clutch in a WD and a WD-45. The clutch I'm going to be working on today is out of a WD-45 which has a few extra parts than a WD clutch. Since this clutch is out of the tractor and torn apart, there's a separate uh, setup and uh, procedure that you do. Um, if you're trying to adjust your clutch that's already in your tractor, uh, this video is not for you. I'll try to get another one together to cover that later. So now that we have the clutch disassembled, I went through, cleaned up the parts the best I could, inspected the parts. According to the Alice Chalmers service manual, as long as your clutch discs still have the grooves on the disc, it's still a good usable clutch. The way you put these in is the two outside discs, the hubs point to the outside of the clutch. So the back one and the front one will be the opposite of each other. You watch as I put this together. Now once I get this together this for, for adjustment and setup, I'll have to take it apart anyway, but I'm going to assemble it as if it's going together. So you put the hub that sticks out to, facing towards the, the back of the clutch or out of the clutch. We're going to pressure plate. Now on the 45 clutch, it has an extra disc that goes in the center. And the hub of that disc is special because it sticks out an even amount on each side of the disc. This is the only disc that looks like this, so you can't get it wrong. It's the one that goes in the center. And you just keep layering on your clutch disc with your pressure plates. And again, you get to the last one, you want the hub sticking towards the outside of your clutch housing or assembly. And that's that. Okay. Now, in this adjustment process, we have to take out the pressure washer. I've already taken the snap ring off um, by compressing the pressure washer and walking it out. So it comes apart. You're going to have three pieces. The outer assembly, your thresh or pressure washer, and whatever that gizmo is called. So I'm going to put it back together. I'm kind of putting everything back together where it, where it originally came apart from. <clears throat> okay. Now, we're going to leave the, the pressure washer out and the snap ring out for now. What we have to do, sit this ring back over the rollers like it normally would. This is a shim pack. Uh, they call it a shim pack because there's basically a layer of shims that you can peel off to get down to the right thickness that you need. Um, this is an older one. You see it's dinged up and, and they're spread apart. I'm not going to use this one. Um, I bought three new uh, shim packs um, that we're using today. Now, when you're doing this setup procedure, you're going to have to make sure that your shim pack is 0 0.140 thick. Um, you may have to add some shims or take some shims off to get it down to that thickness, um, but uh, they have to be at 0 0.140. And you evenly space them around the assembly, like so. Once you do that, Grab the outer assembly and just set it back over top. Okay, just like that. 
And now with the WD-45 clutch, since there's more internal parts, we have to have these spacers in place. Put those in here. Now the service manual don't say put cap screws in it, but I'm going to put the cap screws in it just, just so I can hold those spacers in place. So they won't fall out when I'm taking measurements. I don't want them tight or even snug. I just want them to, uh, to go through the hole and just start the thread a little bit so they can't go nowhere. Okay, nothing's tight, but I'm not going to worry about, I don't have to worry about the spacers falling out and losing them. Now at this point, make sure that the clutch is in the disengaged position. So you want to make sure that this here is up all the way, that it can go, as far as it can go. And now I'm going to need my assistant's hands. Because we have to go through and measure the gap in between the spacer and this upper assembly. But to do that accurately, I need somebody to put down pressure on here so that the measurement comes out correct. Okay, now with my assistant putting some pressure down so I get a good measurement, I'm going to go around with a caliper. See what we get. Make sure you write these dimensions down. This one is right at 0 .100. I'm going to write that down. Eight. 100. Now we're going to go ahead and rotate it. Get the next one. Okay. Again, make sure, make sure that uh, the clutch is, is disengaged. One here is also at 100. So 0 0.100. That's good. It means it's manufactured pretty tight. Rotate it around and get the last one here. Making sure that the clutch is disengaged. And that's also at point 100. So that's uh, pretty nice. That means our shim packs are all going to be set at the exact same uh, thickness. Okay, now it's time to put the pressure washer back into place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a spacer down first because I want I want to clamp it to the table to uh, compress the pressure washer so that we uh, can get the snap ring on a lot easier. Okay, now I'm using going to to start putting the parts of the assembly down. This is the part that actually uh, the rollers of the clutch roll on as you engage and disengage. So put that down on top of the spacer. The washer. This is your pressure washer. It has a taper to it because it's like a spring. Make sure that the outer diameter is pushing against the outside assembly of the clutch. Make sure that the center cone is down inside the other part. You want the outside of this spring or pressure washer to be pushing against the outer assembly of the clutch. Okay, I'm just going to put it on here. Now I'm just going to simply take some C-clamps and comp start compressing it. down evenly. 
So this side here, I need a little bit more clearance in between that clamp. Okay. I'm going to start tightening this one down. Okay, now I'm going to try to start walking it around, get it in place, there it is, very easy. Okay, now after the snap ring is on, pick it up, it's assembled, and your spacer you just throw off to the side. Alright, let's start uh, putting the clutch back together. Okay, now we got the uh, measurements we need. Uh, we have the shim packs separated down to the right thickness. Now we have to go back through and put in the springs. Uh, now for this clutch, since I had it apart, I went ahead and, and got new springs so that the tension is correct. And if you can see down inside here, each, each center has a, a little hole where the spring has to sit into. So you put your spring in there, fat fingers, goes right there, sits right down inside that hole. Okay. Now, when you get to the last plate, it's the same thing. Uh, they have spring holes for the springs to go in to locate off of, so it keeps the, straight, the spring straight. Okay, so I'm just going to put this clutch back together the way uh, we talked through before. The hub facing to the outside of the clutch housing, then a pressure, pressure plate. Now your pressure plate has holes for the springs too. So we're going to put the pressure plate in here, stick the spring down through the hole, and make sure it's going into the hole of the clutch assembly housing. Do that with all three springs. Just keep building up on layers. Again, here's just the WD45 center uh, disc. The hub is evenly spaced on each side. That's how you know it goes into the center. Again, the springs may have to go through the holes of the pressure plates. I should get a screwdriver to help with that. with a needle nose plier so I can move the spring around a little bit so that uh, it can come up through the hole. Everything has to be perfectly lined up. There's not a whole lot of uh, slop in these clutches. disc in place. And then we have the last pressure plate and again those springs got to go in these holes. So once I sit this down in here I'm going to uh, flip it over. Get the numbers lined up. I'm going to flip it over so that uh, I can verify that they're seated. That one's in. That one is in. Okay, they're all they're all seated. All right. 
Now, here's where you put in the spacers and your shims. This here clutch worked out nice because all the shim packs are the exact same thickness, which is great. You don't have to keep them separated. I'll mark them. Okay. Just like that. On this side, put this down. Now it's basically lining up the bolts and mounting it back together.